All right, so like I said, the plan is to kind of go over the even or the odd problems here, and then the even problems are for you in the packet. So problem one said find the distance and slope between each pair of points. Now, you're saying, wait a minute, we didn't do distance and slope formula in this unit. This is triangles. Yeah, but we use distance and slope as part of putting triangles in the coordinate plane and measuring sides and seeing if sides are perpendicular by measuring slopes. So these are good review problems. So we had negative 2, negative 4 was one point, and 1, 8 is the other. So with negative 2, negative 4, and 1, 8, the distance First, we set up our blank formula, and we put our x's in, negative 2 and 1. We put our y's, uh, negative 4 and that's an 8. And we simplify. Now, again, what I noticed a lot of when people were doing distance formula last time is they weren't setting it up. You're trying to dive right to the, towards the solution. But I want to see that you get the numbers in the right spots. Negative 3 squared, we sit, we do it one step at a time, plus negative 12 squared. That's 9 plus 144, the square root of 153. That's the distance between those two points. The slope, again, show the work. y minus y, 8 minus negative 4 over 1 minus negative 2. So it's 12 over 3, which is 4. That's all you have to do. Yeah? Distance? It doesn't matter if you put the y's first and the x's or the x's first and the y's. It doesn't matter. You mean slope? Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, they're very different things. That could be the problem. That's fine. Um, yeah, keep them separate, but they both work together. Uh, number three, classify the triangle by its sides and angles. Now, again, classifying... This is what we talked about earlier this week, I think on Monday. This is so easy, but people mess it up because they only give one name instead of two. You're supposed to give both names. One for sides, one for angles, unless it requires more than two names. Uh, so number three, what kind of triangle would you have there? Give me one name for that triangle. It would be, it would be obtuse. And isosceles. So that's a name that describes sides, I'm sorry, angles, sorry. Ah. Obtuse is angle description, and isosceles is the side description. There should be one name for each. How about number five? Right and isosceles. And again, don't just give one name. Make sure you read the instructions. And if it requires, if it's a very special triangle, it might require more than two names. Uh, how about number seven? Okay, seven is the same as five. It's right and isosceles. Nine. Obtuse. And scalene. So the whole first page, pretty simple. Review type stuff. I've done the odds, you do the evens. Number 11, find the measure of the indicated angle. And again, I'm going to do the best I can to draw pictures here. So we've got... Okay, something like that. We were told this angle is 130. 
this angle is 160. What's the measure of that angle? This is an application of the exterior angle theorem. And if you recall, in the exterior angle theorem, the measure of the exterior is the sum of the remote interiors. And there are a couple we could, could remember that, or we could go about it a different way. But what do you come up with? It is not 50. Because if it was 50, then we'd have 130 and 80. That would give me 180, and they still got a 30 angle at a triangle to work with, right? It's 20? Okay. Now I'm here 20 and 30. How can we sort this out? What do triangles add up to? Interiors add up to 180. Now, like I said, I can use the exterior angle theorem that this plus this has to equal that. So 130 plus x equals 160. That's the exterior angle theorem. But what most people will do is they'll revert to this. Say, oh, well, this is 20 right here. And 130 and 20 is 150. How much is left over here? That must be 30. Most people will do it that way, the puzzle solving way. And I don't care which method you use, just that you find the angle. Uh, 13, very similar. Okay, so we had 72, 58, and X is down here. Now, again, if you remember your exterior angle theorem, that's the easiest way. X must equal 72 plus 58. The measure of the exterior equals the sum of the remote interiors. That was our exterior angle theorem that we learned. However, what most people will do instead is they'll use triangle sum, add this up to 180, so 72 and 58 is 130, means this angle must be 50. And then we'll use linear pairs to come up with 130. But again, that just comes straight from the idea that triangles add up to 180 and that linear pairs add up to 180. These two are linear pair. Initially, 130 I got from adding these two. But note that the sum of these two equals the measure of that. It's the same thing. That's the exterior angle theorem. Yes, that's the exterior angle theorem. For number 15, it said find the value of x, and it gave us a nice isosceles triangle. So let's give ourselves a nice isosceles triangle. Except it was rotated. Come here. Come here, there we go. Good triangle. All right. Okay. And it wanted us to find X right here. Now, what do we know about isosceles triangles from yesterday? Well, two congruent sides and two congruent angles. angles. And those congruent angles are which angles? The base, the base angles. So if this angle is 69, is this my other base angle? It's kind of on the bottom. What angle is this one? X is the... What do we call that angle that is right at the... between the two legs of the triangle? Thank you. It's the vertex angle. This is what we talked about yesterday in the vocab, folks, is that you need to know the vocab because it's going to come up and bite you if you don't. We talked about the parts of a triangle yesterday, parts of an isosceles triangle. That was on the board. Is it in your notes? Did you take notes? No, probably not, and that's probably why you don't know it right now. Okay. I mean, seriously, how many people copy down that picture with the parts of the isosceles triangle into their notes? Anybody? Well, that's just it. You, do, you aren't taking notes, so of course you haven't learned it yet. You are supposed to be taking notes. That is part of your responsibility. That's part of your learning process. Most people in here are not doing that, and I don't grade them. I'm not going to grade them because they aren't for me, they're for you. 
but you should be doing that. And then when you say, well, I don't know what the vocab is, well, of course not, because you've done almost nothing to learn it. It's not going to magically appear in your head. You have to do something to make that happen. And taking notes is part of that process. So start thinking about it. And then start doing it. All right, 69 degrees here, so this is also going to be 69 degrees. That uses up 138 degrees. We have to subtract from 180. 42 degrees is what we're left with for X. Uh, number 17, another isosceles triangle. A little shorter and wider this time. Very similar situation. Is X going to be 34 also? No. no. This angle is going to be the second 34. That's 68, so that leaves me how many degrees for the vertex? 112. Remember, the vertex can be any measure up to 180. The base angles have to be less than 90. Um, 19, another nice isosceles triangle. This time, rotated like this. We're told that these two angles are congruent and that this side is 6. How long is this side going to have to be? 6. six because it always the sides opposite the congruent angles have to be congruent as well. At 21, it starts getting a little more interesting. With 21, now we get some variables involved. So you have 8x plus 7, 70 degrees, and 21x minus 1. Now just knowing that triangles add up to 180 is going to make things a little bit not as nice. Because that, that makes a very complicated equation at this point. Here's where knowing the exterior angle theorem is really going to come through or not. So what we were looking at before were like the level two questions. Basic information. I mean, just numbers, no variables, no equations to set up. Just can we figure out what this angle is by puzzling it out? Now we're up to the level three questions, people who are going to score A's and B's instead of C's and D's. Because here you have to know the exterior angle theorem in order to make this work. You have to know that 21x minus 1 is going to equal the sum of the two remote interiors, equals 8x plus 7, plus 70. Without that, you've got a huge mess. Without that, you get an equation like you have to say, okay, well, this angle here, and you have to use two variables, that 8x plus 7, plus 70, plus n, equals 180, and then 21x minus 1 plus n is 180. And then I have to set those two equations equal to each other, do a substitution, cancel out the n's, and we get the same equation. But if you don't know the exterior angle theorem, it's really the only way to go after it. And that's very complicated. But if you know the exterior angle theorem, you jump right down to this. And then so I get 21x minus 1 equals 8x plus 77. Adding 1 uh, to each side, subtracting 8x. I get 13x equals 78. So x equals 78 over 13, which is 6. So I did have to use the exterior angle theorem. That is not an obvious solution. 
16, 6. 78 over 13. So x is 6. So that's our value of x. But that one is more complicated. Like I said, if you don't know the exterior angle theorem, you're not going to get that one. You're probably not getting that one. Um, let's look at 23. 23, we're back to another isosceles triangle. Um, again, rotated. Kind of like this. We're told it's isosceles and that this is 30 degrees. And I'm told that this angle right here is 6x plus 3. So let's find the value of x. Well, I can't just say 6x plus 3 equals 30 because it doesn't. 30 is a vertex angle. This is a base angle. But I can figure things out pretty quickly if I'm thinking a little bit. If this is 30, how many degrees are left in that triangle? 150, and since this is isosceles, the base angles have to be congruent, making each one 75. So 6x plus 3 has to be 75. So 6x equals 72, so x is 12. And again, you'll note, I'm just kind of stepping through this one step at a time. Hey, guys, let's pick our heads up, pay attention. We're actually doing your homework right now. You're going to have to do this stuff again anyway, so you might as well be jotting it down as we go. It's like I've given you notes today. All you got to do is actually write them out, because this, this actually will be graded tomorrow. Or you could just redo them all on your own later. It's a homework, right? Review packets are homework. So stay with me. Be writing, be jotting down entire solutions. Don't just write down the answer. Don't just write down x equals 12. Don't just write down x equals 6. If that's all I see, forget it. You know, don't even bother. Don't waste your time. I want to see that you wrote down how it was set up. So you have a good example problem right in front of you. So when you go through and do the even problems, you can look and say, oh, yeah, that's how I did that. Uh, we're just going to finish out what we're working on right now, okay? Number 25. Uh, again, we have an isosceles triangle. Um, a little wider than it is tall. Uh, this one is rotated, so there we go. So these are the congruent sides. This angle is 55, and it wants angle, this angle up here. All right, this one's a little easier. I'm sorry, this angle is 7x minus 7. Sorry. So again, we have to figure out what's going on. If this is 55, what's this angle over here going to be? Down to the lower left. Where are my, my base angle? Well, this is one of my base angles, not my vertex, right? So where's my other base angle? Is it lower left or lower right? Lower left, because it has to be opposite the sides. This is my vertex. So this is 55, so that's 110, making this angle going to be 70. So 7x minus 7 equals 70. We add 70 each side. 7x is 77, so x is 11. 70, yeah, because these two have, add up to 110, leaving me 70 degrees. Again, the two congruent, any time I have an isosceles triangle, If these two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are the congruent angles, and these are my base angles. Uh, you made for the last couple problems, yes. All right. Uh, 27, actually super easy. 
I don't think anyone will have a problem with 27, as long as you think about it. All three angles are the same. This side is 8, this side is x minus 2. If all three angles are the same, what do we know about all three sides? They're all the same. No, they aren't all 60. The angles are 60, the sides are not 60. So be careful. Differentiate between the angle and the side. We talked about that a little yesterday. So 8 equals x minus 2, x equals 10. Oh, that was 27. 29. Triangle JKL has vertices at the given locations. Let's find what kind of triangle we got. So we're going to use graph paper. There's plenty back in the, uh, on the table back there, back behind the t-shirts. Just leave the t-shirts alone. But you don't need it right now, Tatum. Guys, you don't need it right this very moment. So come sit down. Make sure you pick the R paragraph paper, not the trig stuff. All right. So J is at negative 2, negative 1. That's J. K is at 1, 3. And L is at 5, 0. And it's asking me to classify this triangle by sides and also talk about the angles. Talk about whether or not it's a right triangle or not. So this is going to require quite a few measurements. I don't have any horizontal or vertical sides here to help me out. I'm going to have to use distance formula. So we set it up. We use distance formula for the first side. JK equals parentheses minus squared. This is going to tell us the length of JK. So it's negative 2, 1, and negative 1, 3. So it's negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. That's 9 plus 16, square root of 25 is 5. So length here is 5. KL. So 1 minus 5 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared. That's 4 squared, negative 4 squared plus 3 squared. 16 plus 9 is the square root of 25, which is 5. Aha. Uh -huh. We have what type of triangle going on here, do you think? At the very least it is isosceles. Uh, JL. I labeled it so you don't have to ask because I labeled it. Okay. JL is negative 2 minus 5. Negative 1 minus 0. So that's negative 7 squared plus negative 1 squared. 49 plus 1, that's the square root of 50, which would be 5 root 2 when we simplify it. So right away I can tell it is not equilateral, it is isosceles. 5 root 2. Plus negative one squared. Okay, so that tells me it's an isosceles triangle. Now I need to know whether or not it's a right triangle. Obviously, there's only one angle here that could possibly be a right angle, this one here. So I have to check it. How do I check to see if it's a right angle? What measurement will I use to see if it's a right angle? Its lengths won't tell me if it's a right angle. I need to know the slopes of the lines. Yes. The slope of JK uh, three minus negative one, uh, one minus negative two. That's four thirds. The slope of KL. Slope of KL. Can okay, Y minus Y 
3 minus 0 over x minus x, 1 minus 5, is 3 over negative 4. Are these slopes, compare those slopes, are they parallel lines? Obviously not, they intersect. Are they perpendicular? 2. So that tells me they are perpendicular lines, which means this is a right angle. So this is a right isosceles triangle. All right? But on the test, that's what it's going to take tomorrow. On the quiz, you're going to have to do show all that work. And you have to label the work. Notice how it's laid out. We lay it out, we label everything that we find. Why do we have to do this? To show that it's isosceles. Isosceles is length of sides, right is measure of angles.